Hi and welcome, it's Ali from Ali Scraps. I am going to show you some ink blending using the beautiful Tri-Blend markers and I'm going to be using these stamp sets from our Slimline Celebrations uh, promotion that we have going through the month of September and October to actually show you how to do some ink blending. So we have just recently had a face-to-face -face class and uh, we worked on a double page scrapbooking layout and we embellished it using the Fishy Greetings and we used the beautiful um, Circle Cluster Thin Cut okay to in, to embellish our page haven't got that here to show you but we also did a card and we used the star cluster here that you can see these are all part of the slimline celebration bundle promotion we have at the moment all items in this bundle can be bought separately uh, stamp sets can be purchased without the thin cuts we also have a horizontal and vertical um, sentiment stamp that goes goes in the middle so this is two layers of stamps so you've got your horizontal and the vertical is behind here you can see all the details of this over on my website which is alisonbunt.closetomyheart.com.au and um, yes we made this card using this beautiful stamp set here called thoughtful critters Okay, and I um I use the grass from this one here, which is the mini garden gnomes. So beautiful. So stamp and or stamp and thin cut. Okay, so you can have um, the opportunity to purchase those uh, separately or in bundles. So I'm going to just put these aside and going to start working on some colouring of these critters. I'm not going to go into the background um, the making of this background which is using distress oxide inks but we're not doing that we're not here to do that today and of course that's the beautiful thin cuts okay so they are uh, wolf stocks last so uh, let's get started with some of this coloring right so I'm going to start with the thoughtful critters now I thought I had a leaf die cut um, that I didn't have coloured in but it looks like I, I haven't. So I'm going to go over the top of this so you get an idea of um, how to colour. I have been testing some of my colours out to match in with the colours that the girls were using on the weekend. I didn't actually have a list of the colours written down. Um, so I've just been looking off a photocopy so I've just been playing with some of those and I've got those set aside so that's for the fishies but when I when you are using alcohol markers it is really good to have a sheet of paper down to absorb any excess ink that goes through to the other side okay so that's why I've got this piece of paper down so the colors that I'm actually using for this um, for all these little critters etc I've got them here this is out of our marker uh, the first marker bundle that we had uh, this 20 I think 24 26 in that bundle and um, now we have a second bundle so I'll just show you these colors I think I think these are all from the first bundle but if not you can substitute in a different green or a different brown if you haven't got those in in your um or in the bundle okay these pens of course these marker pens we sell they can be bought singly as well as in the bundle but you do get a bundle discount on them all right so we're going to get started with the leaf and as i said i've already colored it in but i'm going to go over it and you know something just so that's easy for you to see i'm just going to go back to a clean piece of paper how's that that's probably better all right so there are many ways of doing alcohol coloring i am going to show you my way and the way i learned i am pretty much self-taught by just watching different people and then go ahead going ahead and doing my own 
sort of uh, mishmash of what I've learnt. So I'm going in with the light colour on these tri-blend markers. So you have a light, I'll just quickly show you, a light, a medium and a dark. All three colours in one pen. It takes all the guesswork out. You don't have to worry about... Um, you don't have to worry about what colour marker goes with another to get your blending. All the blending is within the one pen. Now I am going to go, I think I used the medium for this one. So I'm just, for this leaf, I'm just going to use the dark and the medium. I think this is the one I used. Very simple. This one really doesn't have anything much in it at all that's complicated. It's very, very easy. Okay, so there's really nothing, no no magic tips in that or tricks. Okay, so for this stump, I did use some browns. I started with a light brown, a very light brown. Now, the beauty of alcohol markers is that if you don't like what you've done, you can go over it. You can oversaturate the paper, so be very careful um, if you decide to change up the colours that you perhaps let the uh, cardstock dry before you go putting another layer over the top. So I'm just literally colouring in the whole thing with the light end, and at the moment I'm using the red-brown blend. blend. I should have told you the last colour I used was dull green. So the dull green blend in the light and then in the medium. All right, so I did that. So when I did my original stump, which you can see here on the card, I, I'm i pretty sure I went over this with a few different colours until I got something I like the look of. So I just... Now I've gone outside the line. Whoops. So... What you can do with your colourless blender is to, let me just find it here. Just get this out of my little bag. I have just got a little cosmetic bag that I just had left over. Like it's just a little shower pack bag and it's see-through so I can actually... I can actually see all the colours in there. So this is the... The colourless blend, it's got a fine bullet tip and then a chisel tip. So just with the bullet tip, if you just go along. Um, I did watch a video recently that Close to My Heart did and they suggested letting the um, letting it dry completely, then coming in with your colourless blender. And what that does, well, basically what the colourless blender does, yes, it does blend, but it actually pushes... Uh, with the alcohol that's in the pen, it pushes the colour, the brown that I had there, it pushes it to the back, basically. See how it's come through and it's dark? So it actually pushes the colour through. So it's not actually disappearing. And that's why you have down a scratch piece of paper as well. So that's your colourless blender. You can also use it to... Um, change you can go over your whole thing to lighten things so it blends it bleaches it yeah it does it has a few purposes so that's taken that away and when that dries you won't even notice that there but I am of course I'm going to be putting the um, squirrel on top as well so I'm just following along with these little lines in this stump I pick up a different one I feel like I've picked up a different one no it's just the dark end I'm using now still the same texture still not texture but alcohol marker they aren't a texture because textures from as far as I know they don't have alcohol and they certainly don't blend like this I'm going to come in with a little bit of medium again I'm not really doing anything here that's not you know quite easy to do this is not magic this one I'm still only just doing you know just the bare minimum of coloring just to get a bit of coloring now what I will do though is come back now with the light and go over all of that and that helps blend now as I said before when I first did my sample one or my um 
yeah, the, my demo one. Oh, I'm not going too good here. I've gone outside the line again. So when I did my sample one, I um, and I did use lots of colour. Oh, I did probably not like the colour, so I went over it. Um, yeah, so to to lighten it in different places. So I can do that. I can. I'll show you here what I mean by that. If I go in there in these sections, I can actually take out some of the colour. Sometimes it takes uh, um, a few seconds to react, but I think you'll see where I've actually gone over that. Just trying to get rid of that where I went outside the line. It is a bit late here to be doing this. I probably shouldn't have started this video, but <laughs> I thought um, it was on my mind and I wanted to do it because tomorrow is another day and then my day gets away. Anyway, you get the general idea. So we'll put that aside to dry. Um, we've got our little um, squirrel. And again with this one, I did a whole heap of different things. I know I used the brown-grey blend. This is a warm grey. So um, if you've got a living creature, it's better to use a warm tone or a warm base color so see that's the brown it's a brownie gray it's not like a black gray um, a black gray is definitely more of a cool color uh, yeah definitely a cool color so it's better for non-living things um, like you know just um, well you know not an animal in other words so inanimate, I think it is, is the word, inanimate objects. So I've just done the light, then I've done the dark around the edges, then I've gone back in with the light to get that. With the actual colours in the other parts of the um, squirrel, I've used all sorts of things, but gold brown, I'm going to go in with the gold brown onto the acorn first and colour that in. So we want the acorn to be a little bit different colour to the squirrel because, of course, we want it to stand out a little bit. Now, in saying that, we don't really need to do the acorn. I've just remembered we've got a little sign that goes over the top. So maybe I won't do any more. I've just remembered. Okay, so what we'll do is, while I'm thinking of, is we'll do the sign. So I'm just going to do his little paws. And I'm going to go with a, let me see, um, what have I got? I've got the, that brown, golden brown shape. We'll just do his, it's not really the colour I'm looking for. What colour is it that I'm wanting? Um, earth brown, here it is. So this is the earth brown blend. So the light, I'm going to... Do his little hands in that colour. And if I feel that's too light, I can come back in with a darker colour. Now I'm just putting little dots down. And you know, that might be enough. I can come in later and make that darker. Now for the squirrel, I am going to start colouring him in all over with this light end of the earth, earth brown blend. Don't really need to colour his hands in uh, his, his arms because they're going to be under the sign, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Now I'm just doing it in strokes, but it is actually nice to do it in circles as another option. Depends on the area you're colouring in. If it's large area, it actually looks quite nice done in circles, and I'll come back and I'll do that and show you that in a moment. So I'm just going to quickly, actually this is a nice big area, so I'm just going to just going to go around in circles. And I think it's really nice for uh, things like fur. I have a feeling this, this marker might be drying out a little bit been getting a bit of work over the last couple of weeks now the alcohol markers do actually last a long time 
I have had mine now for, I think it's, uh, I think we've had them at least two, one year at least, maybe two years. All right, so see how that's, it's still a little bit blotchy, but it's in circles. If that was in lines, it wouldn't look nearly as nice. Okay, and here I'm just going to go over his face in little circles. As I said, it sort of looks a bit like fur. Okay, but we're only on our first our first layer. So I'm coming in with the dark end now. Just going to go around the outside of his face. Now you can get really particular about, you know, which which way the light's coming from and where the shadows are going to be. Um, I am not worrying too much on this. It's not really um, essential and um, for this fun little project. But you could certainly practice um, your shadow skills. So we've come in with the dark. Put a little bit there. And I've also put little dots on that area of his tail that have got the dots on it. Now I'm going to come in with the medium and I'm just going to come inside that dark edging that I've put there. And I'm just coming in there. Just come on on the inside of that one. Building up those colour layers. All right, and then I'm going to go back over it with the light and go back over the dark and the medium that I've already done and that will help blend all of those colors together yeah this one's definitely gone a bit a bit uh, dry you can definitely buy refill they are refillable so you can get them from a supplier that does supply the tri-blend marker refills some art or um, graphic design suppliers might have them as we are just a crafty crafty lot and um, we haven't as to date we haven't been uh, stocking the refills okay there you go so as that dries back that will help that will even out a bit more all right, so that's him, and I think his little paws are dark enough. Oh, the other thing I did with this, if you've seen my picture, is I've gone around the edge with the, um, this is the coral blend, and I'm going to use the light, the light end first. I'm just going to go on the inside of this sign just to draw a little bit of colour in around the edges so you can color the whole sign in yes i have to stamp it yes but um i'm just going to put a little bit of color just a little bit of color to break up that white space all right so there's that little squirrel and then um i had a lot of fun with the mushrooms let's do those next so i'll just do one mushroom so you'll get the idea so again i used the coral blend and i went um I did the base and I'm going to show you um, so we've got we go over here with the light color okay now I'm going to put some shadowing on this one on this left side so I'm going to come in on the left side just like so and then also a bit of a shadow say underneath where the top of the mushroom throws shade onto the bottom stem and then I'm going to come in with the medium and then I'm just going to build up next to that okay see how that's going and then I'm going to come in again with the light back with the light and then blend those together like so now for the actual dots on the mushroom I'm just using the light coral blend okay just like that now again I could put a little bit of shading on those perhaps just put a little bit of shading just to add a little bit of interest. I didn't do it with my other one, but I'll just do a little bit. As I said, it's um, it was you know there was a lot going on with this card, and I was just aiming to do um it as quickly because there were just a lot of coloring 
and I just wanted to make it as simple as possible. Now for the hood of the mushroom, I'm going to go in with the dark, this is the dark end of the coral. So we're still using the coral and I'm going to go around in little circles and get a nice saturation of colour. Now with the alcohol markers themselves, they will bleed through and they, if you don't use a good ink like this intense black ink that's made for alcohol marker pens, or I should say, it's it. I don't know if it's made for it, but it certainly um, suits it very well because it it doesn't smudge. Um, the black ink doesn't smudge, and it doesn't allow this ink to um, run outside or bleed outside. But it will go through to the back. See how. I was quite saturated on there and if you do oversaturate your paper you might get it seeping out from underneath and then it might come out past the black lines but there you go there's that okay so that's a little mushroom <clears throat> okay we'll go on actually we'll do the raccoon so with the raccoon I use the brown gray blend now you don't have to do much to the raccoon i just wanted to create a little bit of interest so i just did a little bit with the light end i just went underneath his eye area okay just basically where i thought there might be a little bit of shadow if the sun was coming down on top of him but also this you know where you've got those bands of black fur you might have a little bit of um you might have just a little bit of, um, you know, where the white meets the grey sort of thing. Uh, sorry, the black the black meets the white fur. You might get a bit of grey area. And in the curves around his legs and under, yeah. And, yeah. and then we're just going to give him a little bit of grey on the ears. And that's pretty much it. I didn't do anything more to that. I did do his little, with the light colour. I just did a little tiny touch on those little bits of hair on his top of his head. And that's it. That's all I did. <clears throat> now with the balloon, I used the coral blend again. I tried to leave a little bit of a white edge on the in like around the inside the line. Just to try and give it a little bit of um dimension because the balloon is obviously meant to be round it's not meant to look flat um, so I just built built up my color and then and yeah leaving that edge around it so I built up the color with the light coral blend and then I came in with the dark end I did the little bit down the bottom and I basically again coloured around there, leaving that white edge and the same over that side. And hopefully around the top, turn it around. Yeah, like so. Then I came in with the medium. So you're probably already seeing that pattern of starting with the light, then going to the dark. Then going to, into the medium and then coming back with the light. Sometimes the lids are, oh, they get tight. I did put hand cream on, so it's made it a bit slippery, I think. All right, so then I'm just going to go in and blend all of those three colours together. Now, again... There's lots of more intricate ways of doing a balloon to get the shading and shadows on them where the light hits them. But um, that is all I did for ours. Simple. Just don't make it too hard. Right, we do have a hedgehog, but I don't have a hedgehog on this card. Um, so I won't worry about him today. Um, and we'll do the bunny rabbit. So... Just pick a, you know, maybe if you've got a brown or a, this is tan, you could try the tan colour. Let's try the tan. Now, I did do the inside of the ears. Um, I did do those, the light coral. So we'll come back to those. And this is not the colour I used on my bunny on the card. 
Um, I think I've used a mixture of colours and it looks a little bit like the squirrel but maybe lighter. So um, I'm going to do this bunny differently. So I'm going to go in with the tan, the light tan. Just go all over with that. And his little arm. And he's going to be holding the balloon. So just, just go in with all over. If you stamp with the intense black ink and then start using the alcohol markers straight away, you may find a little tiny bit of bleeding. So just be mindful of that. Um, you might just need to leave it a little while, go away and have a cuppa or something, and then come back in half an hour or so, and then you should not have any problems at all. So we'll just go around a bit of the edges with the dark and I'll put a little bit on his edge of his top part of his ear like so. I'm going to come in with the medium around here. Alright, just add a little bit of medium. And then finish off once again with that light. And that will help blend blend that together. So this will be a completely different looking bunny to the one on my card. This is a lot lighter colours. It's actually very sweet. A bit more like of a storybook little character like out of a kid's book. And as I said, once again, it will, that will dry back and blend a little bit more. I'll just do the inside of his ear or her ear with the light coral blend. And if I go over it a couple of times, even with the same light coral I can build up a bit of colour by going over it a couple of times. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Now, just for his tail, or her tail, <laughs> I haven't decided. I'm just going to do, just with the light grey, the light brown-grey blend. I'm just going to put just a few little dots on the tail. I just, just thought I'd take away that white look. And that one I done. I did a brown tail. All right, so that basically is the colouring of these little critters and accessories. I hope that's been helpful. So I'm just going to slide those off to the back. And now we're going to start the fish. All right, so I am going to try and do them as best as I can to the original colours. Now, in the project we made we had four pieces of this seagrass or seaweed I'm going to do I'm going to color one because they're all the same so what I will use now there's a few greens in our range in the first set of tri blend markers there's the dull green blend we also have a light green blend, um, so I might go for that. Um, but in the other set, there is an alpine green. So um, now I just wanted to show you. Now, firstly, I want to show you our two monthly catalogue. All of these stamp and thin cuts are in here on page 46. 47 and 48 you can see the beautiful fun artwork they've done here and I can see they've they've used some glitter gel our beautiful range of glitter gel on some of these cards they look really great and they've also used some, some distress oxide inks you can see and they've used the water technique and I can see they've used some little clear little clear gems uh, the loose gems that we now are carrying and they have put some of those there to look like bubbles so it just adds to the bubbles that the you know there the fish has got 
there and whatnot. So, um, and then there's the, there's the thin cuts and so forth. These are showing you the actual stamp sets and the sentiment set. And yeah, so that's uh, 47, 48 and 49. And then in our 12 monthly catalogue are our tri-blend markers. And here they are here. So we've got bundle one. Okay, so there's 24 in that set. Um, plus you get a blender, a, a black, but you also get the colourless blender Okay, or blender marker they call it so these are your colors so you can see I've got the whole set of those and I've got some of these ones as well I've been adding them to my order um, occasionally I'll get one or two just with my order um, so we are pretty much using colors from this set here okay pop that away so I've got my little colouring guide here, but um, I'm just also going to get my photocopy up there. So we're going to start with the grasses and I'll start with the dull green blend and this is the light end. And I'm going to go take that down just on the left hand side of each of these. And I'm being fairly quick, but because it does spread a little bit so if I don't get all the way to the edge it will fill it in for me now um, on the dark end I'm just going to go and do the right hand side I'm not going to do anything fancy on this just do the two the, the light on one end or one side and then the dark okay so no blending really nothing fancy on this just really simple coloring so if you find it hard to stay in the lines you can definitely just do some dots if you find that easier um yeah that might work better for you so just go in with the dots and then fill just fill in the gaps when it doesn't fit fill the whole area so there's the seaweed just simple seagrass seaweed whatever so just simply done all right so i'll just pop that out of the way as well put the grass up there what else have we got we've got next the i'm going to put these pens back a bit um i think i need not many of those but i'll just keep these couple here so i just actually show you the colours I've pulled out. Citrus blend, true blue blend, the orange blend, maybe not the alpine green because it's out of the other set. So the, the, excuse me, the dull green, the green turquoise blend, I said the citrus, um, the coral blend. Okay, I've got my colourless marker or my blender pen there. And I've also got that light green blend. And I also, well, I don't really need that one, no. So these, these are your colours. Okay. So let's keep going. So I'll do the seahorse. I'm going to do this a mixture of colours. But we're going to start with the light orange. And we're just going to, it's quite a bright colour if it is is too bright and you don't like it you can go over it with um more of a dull color so something like the um the brown um brown gray blend that warm warm brownie gray that we used on the um oh what did we use on the we used it on the raccoon yeah so you can certainly um do that so i'll just uh I'm not going to do too much on this little fella. Um, that's the light. It does look very bright. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of going in with the dark colour just to put some of the little markings on. And I might just colour in those dots. And then on his chest, um, 
we did actually use the tan so if I can find what I've done with the tan there we are so I'm just going to go over his chest with the tan I knew there was one one from the um the thankful critters that I used to do this whoops we'll go to the dark tan all right I'm just going to run a little bit along those edges and I think that's enough um, there's this very small area so it'll just blend too much now it is very bright so I am going to see what it looks like if I go over it with the pale sorry with the um, here you go the brown grey blend so this warm grey so this is just going to knock that colour back a little so this is a really good one to have in your stash because sometimes you just don't want that really bright look but you still want you still want it to look orange or you still want it to have the look of orange or whatever your bright color is um so yeah so see how that's knocked that back a bit i i like that i, I think that worked really well okay so we're going to use do this little tiny fishy here it's going to be the coral blend it's pretty much light coral all the way around see what happens sometimes don't don't be concerned if you pull that off and it comes apart you just have to try and get maybe the um tip of your scissors in just to ease it off I use my fingernail which is really terrible because that's what splits my nails and it just pops off so that's the coral blend so the coral blend this is just pretty much light coral you can go all over if you want with the light coral and I think I will just then I can come back in with the darker colors do his little fins and we're going to do yeah so I'll check it in a minute to see what which ones have the which ones have the dark coral so that's it all colored in with the light then I'm going to come in with the dark and then put in this one and that one and that one all right that's cute isn't it and then I think in the picture it doesn't show up but I think I'll just add a little bit of shading and then blend it just a little bit of medium I'm using just to give it a little bit of personality and blend it now with the light coral again mm -hmm. okay and a bit a little bit on his tail and his different fins just come in with a little bit more on there just to give it a little bit more color that's looking good all right so that's that one i'm going to choose this one here i'm going to go in with this citrus blend and i'm going to do the couple of fins in this bright yellow and i'm going in with the dark color so we just nothing too fancy on here either you don't even have to color all of that in because i'm sure he'd have some light reflecting off him so we can just do that there um then i'm going to do i might just uh what i'll see what the picture's done the picture has used i think they've used some yellow on the eyelids i might do some coral on the eyelids i actually quite like the coral on the eyelids so i'll just use the light coral oh this lid on the coral's playing up tonight so the light coral on the eyelids i quite like that it looks like They've got eyeshadow on and, and a bit of lipstick. <laughs> there you go. So for the actual uh, fish body, uh, I'm going to go in with this True Blue blend. I'm starting with the light. I'm going to colour in the body of the fish with this. Just go around. Just go around the outside first. If you're working in a really big area, you might just want to do like a section of this and then um, go on to your dark colour. Oops, it moved and I've gone outside the line again. 
Oh, my blender is getting a good workout tonight. Right, that'll work it out. Okay, so yes, yeah, so you might want to work in smaller areas and so I could sort of just start, say, at the front and do the shadow and shading and then come back in with the, the dark. But that's okay, that's not too big. So I'll quickly go in with the dark colour and put a little bit of a dark in. Um, yep, yeah, and a little bit on his scales here. Okay, we'll just do a little bit around here. Now, on Saturday, Close to My Heart did the whole class um, of these slimline cards and... Um, it was really great. The uh, staff at Close to My Heart Head Office actually did a great lot of tutorials of um, colouring with these markers. So it was really, really good. So um, I need to, yeah, I need to yeah, go back and have another watch of that because I was actually at my class so I didn't I did watch it um in bits and pieces but I haven't finished watching it. Now I'm coming in with little circles of the light blue going over that and hopefully bringing in those colours and getting them to blend. Okay. So again that will soften and blend. As it dries, you can see it already starting to soften and blend. Alrighty, so while we're on the blue, we'll do this one as well. So this is going to be blue and I'm using the light true blue blend. So I'll just colour around the eye. Just colour in here, Min. Okay, and just do his fin. I'll just do every second one with the light. And then we'll come in with a darker colour. Okay. These fish are so cute. And with the darkest blue, I'm just going to go over these little areas. Like his little scales. And then we'll do, I think we'll do, I might try the medium on the fins. Just so it's not just too dark next to the other paler blue just to give it a little bit different so in some um, of our of these markers you might find between the say light and the medium or the medium and the dark there's not a great um, difference in the color so you might find it sort of the middle color matches either very closely to the dark or light yes so I have noticed that with a couple so I am quite happy with that just how it is so I'm going to leave that one out as it is uh, I'm going to do this little fishy and for that one I chose the turquoise the green turquoise blend so for this one it's basically um this little piece here is mint green or turquoise green and this front piece is turquoise green and his fin is this soft turquoise or green turquoise and then those two stripes are just using the dark now actually what I might do just to be different I'm going to use the medium and I'm going to color that whole section in and then show you a little bit of shading just to bring in some again some shaded area 
So just fill in those with the medium, those two sections. So you can see, definitely see the difference in the two colours. There's definitely a shade darker in that medium. So I'm just going to go in now with a little bit of the dark colour. And you can see how that's showing up. Okay. Alright. So then we'll come back. I'm going to do the light all over again. That will help that blend. Go over the light area again. Just... Just give that a little bit of a hit. And then in the other sections where I use the medium and the dark, I'm going to come into that area and blend the dark and mediums together a bit more. Okay. So, yeah, how's that look? It's not too bad, is it? So we have another of those fish, and that's coloured exactly the same. So I won't go, I won't bother that. This one here, however, I am going to colour differently. So for this one, I'm going to do coral blend, starting with the light coral. Yes, this coral is being cantankerous this evening. It must have got overworked at the weekend. It's not happy. Right, now we're right. Got it apart. So um, again, we'll give it some eyeshadow and lipstick. Colour in the body with the light. This is going to be another colour that I'll probably use up first. I use a lot of this colour. Because it is a salmon -y pretty, like almost pink. Probably don't need to do those. I can't remember. Oh, no. I'm just looking at the picture. No, these are, these are actually coloured it with this light colour yeah I might have to replace a couple of these before I go getting new colours okay so that's the light coral coming in now with the darkest or the dark coral I'm just going to do the different fins in this colour you can see how beautifully this stands out against the body so there is quite a difference in the between the light and the dark so I might just bring a bit of the medium in just to add just to add a little bit of just a little bit of variation in the body part there we go can't help myself. I need to add a little bit of extra colour in the middle. There you go. So I'm going to leave that like so. It's a bit sketchy and a little bit of white, but I don't mind that look. And then we have this little fish, which we haven't coloured in yet. This one is going to be a mixture of the green turquoise blend and the coral. So let's get started on that. So we're just going to go in with the light turquoise blend all over this section. Now we're doing them these colours because these are the colours that were chosen for the actual layout that we did. So of course you don't have to do them, you don't have to do them these colours at all. But the idea was to give you a bit of an idea of the um the coloring i'm just going with the light but i will switch over i think i'll just go to the medium for this one because i'm going to be bringing in coral which is a totally different color and we'll see how that blends with it it was an idea that um claire taught so i will see if i can copy it she did tell me she used the coral blend, so we'll just we'll just see what happens and whether it actually goes. I wondered whether it would go murky brownie colour, which it looks like it is. So I might go to the medium, see what the medium does. Yeah, that's a bit better. So some colours are obviously going to mix 
together and form a bit of a yucky colour. So I'm just going over the face. Actually, I should have done that in the light. So I'll just go over it with the light. I can see that some of that ink has... I might have had a lot of ink on there and it's still not quite dry, which is quite unusual. But anyway... Probably a good idea to avoid just just avoid going over the lines themselves. I was being a bit heavy on that area, but uh, it certainly doesn't bleed as such. But it, like you saw when I did that, it does. Um, if you go over the actual black lines themselves, they may smudge. But try not to go over those lines. And you'll be right. There you go. That's a bit better. Okay. So. Let's go into the middle with that. I think I want it a little bit like that. And a little bit of medium blend up there as well. Just to give that a bit of extra. Okay. So that's just the medium blend and just try and blend that out with the light again brings it all together There we are, and just a little bit more of the light turquoise, I think, in this area here. There we go. Okay, what do you think? Does that look um, does that look pretty good? I think they've come up quite good. I can't get this. Oh, now we've got that off. All right. Don't know why it has to do this to me today. Maybe it's the rainy weather. I'm just going to darken this area up because it just, to me, looks a little bit insipid and a little bit on the brownie side. I'm just going in with some dots. Okay, that looks better already. And a little bit of, a few dots down there. I think that looks better. Okay. So there we are. Done. There are our little sea creatures and we have our thoughtful critters. So I hope you have enjoyed watching me do those. And um, yeah, if you like the idea of those stamp and thin cuts, okay, they are available till the end of October these may sell out I hope they don't but they could so I would not suggest you leave it to the last minute it's um, obviously the 1st of October so I am um, at the moment they are all still available so um, thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day and um, enjoy your weekend that's coming up bye